Today, we're going to solve one of the most annoying problems that you may encounter as an Unreal Engine artist, which is permanently changing pivot offsets or pivot points on your static meshes inside of the level as well as the static mesh itself. This is an issue that I run into all the time and I finally found a fix for inside of Unreal Engine without having to go outside into Blender and reset the origin point. There's been a lot of videos covering how to do this inside the level, but I haven't seen many videos on how to correct this on a static mesh level. But today we're gonna go into the modeling tools of Unreal Engine 5, and we're going to correct our pivot point so that we can paint on our landscape correctly with tree assets. Now you can see that I have imported some max tree assets that we're going to be working with today. First order of business though is to delete the basic floor and we are going to create a landscape very quickly. So come up to the selection dropdown and click on landscape. We're not gonna do anything fancy, just click create. And you should be able to then click the drop down menu again and select selection. Now we're back in our main view and I'm going to select all six of these assets and drag these trees in. Now that we have the trees in there, you can see that they have a singular location for the pivot point. If I select any one of the trees, you can see that the transform gizmo has not moved. It is in the same location over here in the left corner. This is not ideal because if you have a landscape that has different topography, then when you place these, if the origin point is not in the correct location, then you will have floating trees and plants, which is not very ideal when you're working inside of Unreal Engine. We're going to fix this by coming into the selection dropdown and clicking on modeling. Now select any one of these trees that has an offset pivot point in the wrong spot, and we are going to come down to the transform section and select pivot. You will then see six buttons which have default or easy locations which you can place the pivot. You can also use the gizmo on screen to move the pivot point, but I find it easier to just click bottom or center depending on the object, in this case bottom, and you'll see that the pivot point automatically snaps to the center bottom of the model, which is super nice. Click accept, wait a couple of seconds, and you will have a corrected pivot point or origin point at the bottom of your tree. Then quickly just apply this to all of the other assets that you need to do so. All right, next we're going to select the modeling drop down and go back to selection. Then I'm going to quickly select these trees now that I have their pivot points corrected and we're just going to delete them from the level. Now you can see if you select one of these and drag it in, it has the correct pivot point which is super nice to know. Then we're going to click selection drop down and select foliage. Then in our content browser we're going to select with shift and click all six trees and we're going to drag them into the foliage type. Inside of the foliage type we now have a paint density brush that we can adjust and then we can paint trees. For this exact scene, I found it nice to have a very large brush. I just maxed it out and then changed my paint density to 0.001. And that's mostly because these trees are very large. And then we can just paint on our landscape and we can see all these wonderful trees appearing in our scene. These are nanite optimized as well with Unreal Engine 5.1, which is super nice because our scene will maintain its performance and we'll be able to have some really cool scenes. Now, if we go down and we explore our quick tree environment, you can see that all these trees are placed correctly and they look awesome. They're quite dense for a tree this size, but for this demonstration, it gives you a good idea of what you can do. Maybe we'll just use Control L and move the mouse to adjust our lighting a little bit to get something a little bit more cinematic, and then we can do a quick render based on that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this short tutorial, and I hope it was super helpful because this is something that took me a while to figure out, and I am so thankful that there are now modeling tools inside of Unreal 
to allow permanent fixes for issues that we run into in the middle of a project. Thank you, and until next time, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and click the bell notification to hear the next time a video comes out. 2023 is going to be a very cool year. We're going to be covering many topics, and I'm going to be dropping a lot of good content for how to create cinematics, short films, and do client work inside of Unreal Engine and Blender. Thank you and create more than you consume.